Does religion drive you to hate those who do not worship your God? Good morning, everyone. This is our reflection question for today. There was much debate within the walls of the Vatican regarding Polish priest Maximilian Kolbe's canonization. No one doubted his holiness. Rather, the question being debated centered on whether or not he died a martyr's death or a tragic death. During the German occupation of Poland, he was arrested for a number of anti-Nazi German materials published by his monastery. Father Kolbe and his community also helped hide, feed, and clothe 3,000 Polish refugees, half of them Jews, in their monastery. Sent to Auschwitz concentration camp, he endured the awful conditions and brutal treatment. One day, three prisoners appeared to have escaped. The deputy commander ordered 10 men to be chosen to be starved to death in an underground bunker. Franciszek Garovnicek was one of them, crying out, My wife, my children. This moved Father Kolbe to volunteer to take his place. From the underground cell in which they were shut, there continuously arose the echo of prayers and canticles. The man in charge of emptying the buckets of urine found them always empty. Thirst drove the prisoners to drink the contents. Since they had grown weak, prayers were now only whispered. At every inspection, when almost all the others were now lying on the floor, Father Kolbe was seen kneeling or standing in the center as he looked cheerfully at the face of the Nazi soldiers. After two weeks, almost all died of dehydration and starvation except Father Kolbe. He was executed with a lethal injection. Pope John Paul II entered the debate on his canonization and put an end to this by reminding members of the congregation in charge of such matters of a simple question that was asked that fateful day. After Maximilian Kolbe stepped forward and offered to take the place of a condemned man, the Nazi concentration camp commander asked him, Who are you? Maximilian replied, I am a Catholic priest. Maximilian was killed out of hatred of the Catholic faith. Saint Maximilian Kolbe did not answer the evil commander's question by just stating his name. If he had, then God's glory may have shined in a completely different way that day and for all eternity. But we know the way Maximilian answered the question because the man he saved, Franciszek Garovnicek, survived that day, that concentration camp, and the remaining months of that devastating war. In fact, he even survived Maximilian's canonization ceremony. In today's Gospel reading, people wanted to stone Jesus because of his claims of being equal to God, of being sent by him, of having existed long before Abraham and Moses were born. We reflect today on our attitude toward those who do not share the same faith we have. For example, a number of us have already formed their impressions of our Muslim brethren on the basis of actions made by the radical fundamental sects who espouse violence and killing in the name of religion. We have reason to condemn the violence by certain Muslims, but we can look at most of our Muslim brothers and sisters with respect and love for their many beautiful religious traits and practices. We marvel at their prayer life as they pray five times a day. We are amazed at their continuous 30-day fasts leading to Ramadan. When we look at the negative side of people because of their religion and forget about the more important aspect of our religion, and that is to follow the commandment of love, the stones we throw at others may be the stones that should bury us for our lack of love. The same goes for our scathing remarks and condemnation we have of our Christian brethren who have chosen to follow Jesus outside the Catholic faith. Authentic and enduring religion should drive us to seek communion with those who are different from us. Indeed, the Catholic faith has survived 2,000 years of persecution, rejection, and condemnation from others because of the obedience to loving others. If we desist from loving, the silent disease of hatred could lead us to sin. Differences of faith observance and practices should not prevent us from loving, for love is the commandment that unites us to everyone, regardless of religion, political color, or beliefs. Let this Lent bring us to that higher plane of faith through our love for one another. Who are you? The question asked of Jesus and St. Colbe is a question we need to answer too. We are more than our name. We are followers of Christ who continue to proclaim God's love for the world through our own witnessing. With the help of the Holy Spirit, we can give life to those who have been crucified 
In the name of religion, through our words, our prayers, and our actions, we can be life givers even to those who wish us harm. Let us pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, I have no claim to be a faithful follower of yours if I do not love those who are different from me in attitudes, behavior, and perspectives. Help me to love all, and not only those who are similar to me, for you have shown that in Jesus who loves everyone. This I pray in Jesus' holy and mighty name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless your families, brothers and sisters. God bless our Catholic faith and couples for Christ.